Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in Ezra chapter 3. Um, as we've got all the detail, we have all the purposes that God brings his people back, especially into the places that he promises. We just cling to those promises, but also in his fulfillment, we worship him in those promises. And that's what Ezra chapter 3 is truly all about. Ezra chapter 3, bringing back what God had promised bringing the people back into this place and Cyrus being able to give them permission to be able to say, hey, go back and build your temple. And so here we get the rebuilding of the altar um, of worship, of uh, of burnt offerings, uh, celebrations, festivals, back into the people of God as they know it, and then the rebuilding of the temple. And so, with no further ado, Ezra chapter 3, verse 1. When the seventh month came... And the Israelites had settled in their towns. The people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. And so as we have here in the seventh month, uh, we get to see that it's probably about uh, in March that they traveled back. But in the seventh month, meaning that they've been back about three or four months, uh, we're looking at September, October in that seventh month, um, Tishri, as is called in the Jewish calendar. And uh, this is one of those great months of celebration. This is the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, that they remember that they remember that they were um, in tabernacles, in booths, in tents, as they were wanderers, but God provided. And that's a beautiful thing to think about here within this festival, within this time frame of Israel. God is going to provide. And what is he going to provide? What they had before. Worship, altar, temple, the people of God doing what the people of God do. Verse 2, Then Jeshua, son of Josedek, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Sheotiel, and his associates began to build the altar of God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt, burnt offerings on it to the Lord both the morning and evening sacrifices. And so I just wanted you to pick that up real quickly. What was so important to them? What was so important to them was the law of Moses and what it describes, but also the worship of God, even in the midst of the circumstances, they say the fear of the people around them. There, there is a lot of people, there's a lot of armies and, and, and uh, frankly, different nations around them wondering why they're coming back. And these other nations, they want to take Jerusalem. Jerusalem's still the city. Still a city that has a lot of eyes and focus on it. So all these people around saying, I would conquer. They're not that great of people. They're just coming back. They're maybe susceptible to overthrow. Um, And so all these people around them, but yet what do they do? They don't build the walls of security. They don't build any kind of protection. They build an altar to their God to sacrifice to him because that's what he's appointed. First and foremost, worship is the first priority. And then being able to know that God will provide everything else. So it says, both morning and the evening sacrifices they did. Verse 4, Then in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, which with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, and the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred feasts of the Lord as well as those brought as free will offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, though the foundation of the Lord's temple had not yet been laid. And so we get to see festivals, uh, new moon sacrifices. It's just talking about, um, uh, frankly, uh, new moon <laughs> uh, as the seasons come as it comes into the right this is a very important month uh, the seventh month in the Jewish calendar uh, within these festivals within these in gatherings uh, within these provisions as this new moon sacrifice um, you can check check that out um, in first uh, Samuel chapter 20 uh, if you'd like to uh, but it's, it's just the time of a different sacrifice always bringing new things for the people of God to be able to bring worship to God first and foremost it says then verse 7 then they gave money to the masons and carpenters and gave food and drink and oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre so that they would bring cedar logs by sea from Lebanon to Joppa as authorized by Cyrus 
king of Persia. In the second month of the second year, so we're talking about April, because March is really that first month, in uh, April uh, time frame, of the second year after their arrival at the house of God in J Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Jeshua, son of Josedek, and the rest of their brothers, the priests and Levites, and all who had returned from the captivity to Jerusalem, began the work, appointing Levites 20 years of age and older to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Jeshua and his sons and brothers in Kadmiel and his sons, descendants of Hodaviah, and the sons of Ahanadad, and their sons and brothers, all Levites, joined together in supervising those working on the house of the Lord. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets and the Levites and the son of Asaph with cymbals. Uh, it's kind of neat that uh, uh, maybe you don't know that name, but Asaph. Um, that's a lot of times as we get to see um, at the beginning of Psalms. You know, uh, David wrote about half the Psalms, but of the other half Psalms, we have Solomon, we have um, Ezra, we have all these people bringing about Psalms as well. But Asaph is this kind of musical ancestor. And so here we get to see Levi's the sons of Asaph with symbols, right? And then took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, he is good. His love and to Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Excuse me. It was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping, because the people made so much noise, and the sound was heard far away. Great joy at looking forward, great weeping at the reality of what had took place just years earlier. Um, within the foundation of the temple. Now, Solomon's temple was incredibly grand and a wonder of the world. This was amazing, um, but it was no Solomon's temple. And so they're, they're weeping at where they are within that life of being able to know that there was so much greater and, and, and now we're going to build this, but it isn't as great. But the reality towards that weeping too is just a reminder of who they were and what happened in and amongst their ancestors it has happened in and amongst their exile um there's joy weeping for joy and there's also weeping for mourning uh, so you get to see that the body of those people together are a regular people together <laughs> there's great joy and there's great sorrow but yet what's in the midst of them is worship and the laying of the foundation of god's presence with his people. It really does speak to us in many and great ways. Wherever we find ourselves in, as we're in a joyful season in our life, or we're in a mourning season in our life, God is present, and we're called to worship Him this day, to uh, give our allegiance to Him in everything that we are, whether it is weeping, whether it is joy. Either way, whatever we do this day, in word or deed, let us do it to the Father in heaven because what he's given to us in Jesus Christ. There is weeping, there is mourning, there is joy, there is celebration. But in all those circumstances, there is God. He's always been there, always will be here, and he's present here this day. Have a blessed day worshiping him.